Thanks, I believe Palmer will be blessed also. Thank you.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Welcome everybody to this solemn celebration of the Passion of the Lord on Palm Sunday. We begin with the commemoration of the Lord's entry into Jerusalem. And then the gospel today will be the gospel of the Lord's Passion and Death. So we're invited to enter today into the journey of this Holy Week as we move towards uh, the sadness of Good Friday, the emptiness of Holy Saturday, and the joy of Easter Sunday. And so, dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to celebrate with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and in his life. So I invite you now to hold up the palm branches you have with you and I'll say the prayer of blessing and then I or one of the priests will move uh, to the crowd to bless the palm branches with holy water. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing. We who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Now when he was near Bethphage and Bethany, close by the Mount of Olives, as it is called, he sent two of the disciples, telling them, Go off to the village opposite, and as you enter it, you will find a tethered colt that no one has yet written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You are to say this, the master needs it. The messengers went off and found everything just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said, Why are you untying that colt? And they answered, 
the master needs it. So they took the colt to Jesus and throwing their garments over its back, they helped Jesus onto it. As he moved off, people spread their cloaks in the road and now as he was approaching the downward slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole group of disciples joyfully began to praise God at the tops of their voices for all the miracles that they had seen. They cried out, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Master, check your disciples. But he answered, I tell you, these keep silence, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord.
almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength make haste to of your name to my brethren, a 
of Jacob, give him glory. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table and the apostles with him, and he said to them, I have long to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you, because from now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup after supper, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. And yet, here with me on the table 
is the hand of the man who betrays me. The Son of Man does indeed go to his faith, even as it has been decreed, but alas for that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to ask one another which of them it could be who was to do this thing. A, dis a dispute arose also between them about which should be reckoned the greatest. But he said to them, Among the pagans, it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. <clears throat> For who is the greater, the one at table or the one who serves? The one at table, surely. Yet here I am among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials. And now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan, you must know, has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in your turn must strengthen your brothers. He answered, Lord, I would be ready to go to prison with you and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, by the time the cock crows today, you will have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out with purse or haversack or sandal, without purse or haversack or sandals, were you short of anything? They answered, he said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it. If you have a haversack, do the same. If you have no sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Because I tell you, these words of Scripture have to be fulfilled in me. He let himself be taken for a criminal. Yes, what Scripture says about me is even now reaching its fulfilment. They said, He said to them, That is enough. He then left the upper room and made his way as usual to the Mount of Olives, with the disciples following. When they reached the place, he said to them, Pray not to be put to the test. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, and knelt and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel appeared to him coming from heaven to give him strength. In his anguish he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping for sheer grief. He said to them, Why are you asleep? Get up and pray not to be put to the test. He was still speaking when a number of men appeared, and at the head of them the man called Judas, one of the twelve, who went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His followers, seeing what was happening, said, And one of them struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But at this, Jesus spoke. Leave off, that will do. And touching the man's ear, he healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the chief priests and captains of the temple guard and elders who had come for him. He said, Am I a brigand that you had to set out with swords and clubs? When I was among you in the temple, day after day, 
you never moved to lay hands on me. But this is your hour. This is the reign of darkness. They seized him and led him away, and they took him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. They had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and Peter sat down among them. And as he was sitting there by the blaze, a servant girl saw him, peered at him, and said, This person was with him too. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. Shortly afterwards, someone else saw him and said, You are another of them. But Peter replied, I am not my friend. About an hour later, another man insisted, saying, This fellow was certainly with him. Why, he is a Galilean. Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. In that instant, while he was still speaking, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered what the Lord had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who guarded Jesus were mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, They are the who hit you then. And they continued heaping insults on him. When day broke, there was a meeting of the elders of the people attended by the chief priests and scribes. He was brought before their council, and they said to him, He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, So you are the Son of God, then? He answered, It is you who say I am. They said, The whole assembly then rose and they brought him before Pilate. They began their accusation by saying, We found this man at the site of our people's revolt, opposing payment of tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ, a king. Pilate put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, It is you who say it. Pilate then said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no case against this man. But they persisted. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And finding that he came under Herod's jurisdiction, he passed him over to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was delighted to see Jesus. He had heard about him and had been wanting for a long time to set eyes on him. Moreover, he was hoping to see some miracle worked by him. So he questioned him at some length, but without getting any reply. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the scribes were there, violently pressing their accusations. Then Herod, together with his guards, treated him with contempt and made fun of him. He put a rich cloak on him and sent him back to Pilate. And though Pilate and Herod had been enemies before, they were reconciled that same day. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the leading men and the people. He said, You brought this man before me as a political agitator. Now I have gone into the matter myself in your presence and found no case against him, nor has Herod either. 
since he has sent him back to us, as you can, you can see, the man has done nothing that deserves death. So I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But as one man they held, This man had been thrown into prison for causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate was anxious to set Jesus free and addressed them again, but they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! And for the third time he spoke to them, Why? What harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death so I shall have him punished and let him go. But they kept on shouting at the tops of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified, and their shouts were growing louder. Then Pilate gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been imprisoned for rioting and murder, and handed Jesus, Jesus over them to deal with as they pleased. As they were leading him away, they seized on a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Large numbers of people followed them, and of women too who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, happy are those who are barren, the wounds that have never borne, the breasts that have never suffered. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, to the hills, cover us. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? Now with him they were also leading out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, and the criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching him. As for the leaders, they jeered at him, saying, He saved others. Let them save themselves. If he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too. And when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, Above him there was an inscription, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for that, for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Indeed, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last.
When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance, so also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee, and they all saw this happen. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright, virtuous man named Joseph. He had not consented to what the others had planned and carried out. He came from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and he lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put him in a tomb which was hewn in stone and in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was imminent. Meanwhile, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus were following behind. They took note of the tomb and of the position of the body. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and on the Sabbath day they rested as the law required. One of the most beautiful and moving statements of Jesus is the one in which he says to his disciples and therefore to us, come to me if you are weary and overburdened and I will give you rest. Learn from me for I am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. I think these words of Jesus, this invitation of Jesus, is very important for us as today we set out once again on the journey of Holy Week, as we accompany Jesus on this last week of his life. We began by celebrating his entry into Jerusalem, and we've read the Passion anticipating now what we will again recall on Good Friday. But on Thursday, many of us will gather together to recall the first time the Lord celebrated what we today call the Eucharist, when he took bread and wine and transformed them into his body and blood for us and for our salvation. And then we'll follow him from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane, as we heard in today's Gospel. And from there, through the terrible hours of the terrible treatment that was meted out to Jesus by those who were determined to destroy him. And then on Good Friday, we will walk with him along the road to Calvary, and stand with Mary and the beloved disciple as together we contemplate the great mystery, in a sense, the terrible mystery of the death of Christ. On Holy Saturday, we will share the emptiness of those first disciples who believed that with the death of Jesus, all their hopes had also been destroyed. And then we'll gather together, either on Holy Saturday night or on Easter Sunday, to celebrate what is really an unbelievable event, and yet we know it to be true, that this man who was so brutally murdered rose from the dead and is our leader bringing us home 
to our eternal salvation. It's really important, I think, for us to begin today, Palm Sunday, reminding ourselves of Jesus' call to us to come to him and learn from him. Our faith teaches us that Jesus is fully divine and also fully human. And because he is fully human, we see in him exactly what God has created all of us for. We see in him the pattern we are called to follow in our own lives. And because he is fully divine, we see in him, in his action, and hear in his words, the very heart of God himself made known to us in Jesus. So in Jesus, we see what we are called to be and what we were created to be. Not so much in the concrete things he did, because Jesus lived over 2,000 years ago in another culture and at another time. So this week, we're invited to go a little more deeply, not just to watch what we see Jesus doing and listen to what we hear Jesus saying, but to ask him to help us penetrate his mind and heart so we don't just see what he did or hear what he said, but we begin to understand why he did what he did and why he said what he said. And in particular, in particular, in this last week of his life, to try and understand why he had to go to the cross for our salvation. There are many explanations, we might say, for this terrible event of the passion, the suffering and the death of Jesus. There was the jealousy and fear of some of the Jewish leaders who worried that he was going to destroy their own positions of importance and authority. We think of the betrayal of Judas, the cruelty and the bloodlust of the Roman army, the cowardice of Pontius Pilate who wiped his hands, washed his hands of the whole affair because he didn't have the courage to stand up for justice and truth. And in all of that, we see reflections of our own failings and our own sin. And it's in that sense that we say that the death of Jesus was caused not just by those people in the past, but also because of our sins and our failings. All of those things can help us to understand why Jesus had to suffer and die. But in the end, there's really only one explanation. Jesus suffered and died for us because he loved us and wanted to set us free from everything that was holding us back from being the people that God has created us to be. And another way for saying that is that Jesus was determined to remain always faithful to his Father no matter what. Because fidelity to God is the path to life. And Jesus, more than anybody else, and in a way that far exceeds anybody else, walked, Lord, inviting us to set out on together. And if we do, when Holy Saturday night or Easter Sunday morning comes, we really will begin to know something of the joy that exploded in the hearts of the disciples as they saw their risen Lord and came to understand that in ways that went far beyond what they had previously believed, he really was the way and the truth and the life.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the, remission, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant Bishop Don and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, but with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us mingle of the body and blood. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
With these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Could you be seated just for a moment, please? Please stand now for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go.